We don't quite know what from, what are we scared of? Terrorism. What is terrorism? Sometimes you look in the mirror and you see the terrorist in your life. <laughs> and we just go, huh, 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 oh God, oh God, no, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> You know, that's what happens in America. They can buy guns and sort of sweets and then they go, <laughs> but laughter, ha, <laughs> it comes out. <sighs> and at last you've just got your, your lungs are ready to just breathe again. So I have been trying all my life to do that for my fear. And I think my greatest fear when I was growing up was not knowing who I was. Because we didn't ask questions as kids. We don't ask questions because that's the way it is. You respect the teacher and the politician. You respect the policeman. The Hauptmann von Köpenick. When I read that as a student, I thought, my God, it's not just us. <laughs> and I think the only first time I really had the courage to have an opinion was when I was 45 years old. And I was on a television station in Australia. It was my first tour to Australia, knowing that I'd meet all the South Africans in Australia. <laughs> and one of my lines in the show there and here is, so many South Africans emigrated to Australia, and the IQ of both our countries went up. <laughs> <laughs> and I was on a TV show, which was live TV, which we uh, very seldom had in South Africa in those years of the early 80s. And this man was a very brittle Australian, very politically aware, and he didn't like me at all for very obvious reasons, white South African. He said, oh yeah, Peter, you're a white South African making fun of apartheid. What would you do if you were a black? And I thought, you're not supposed to ask me that. You're supposed to say, where does he get up a and get her clothes? And then where do you get the wigs? Because that's what they asked me on South African TV. And I said, if I was black, I would be in Lusaka making guns to fight a party. <laughs> <laughs> Within hours, my father phoned me from South Africa, and he didn't phone anybody from anywhere because it's too expensive. But he phoned me, and he said, what are you saying the police have just been here? <laughs> and the thing with my father is, my father's cousin was the first National Party apartheid Prime Minister. Dr. Diaf Malano was my father's cousin. And so I knew, really truly, that most of the phone calls that my father got were from his relatives in government saying to my father, Hannes, control your son. Tell him to be quiet. You don't want to put your daughter in danger in London. Ah. So I feel very much that I was on that side of the fence. Once or twice here in Germany, they said to me, I'm a Peter, we pass to these things. How do you fit into this whole apartheid thing? How do you fit in? I said, I was Eva Brown's cousin. <laughs> and it was very important to use that position and to use the whiteness of my skin to reflect the madness that we were in. And we had protest theatre, and some of you know our protest theatre because some of it did tour because some of it was good. Most of it wasn't something we could tour. It was just a manifestation of such anger and such boring material. I mean, how long can you say? Free Mandela, get rid of apartheid, free Mandela. I mean, then you must stop. It's like 20 seconds. Mm -hmm. So what do they do? Now we're going to dance and sweat over the white liberals in the front row. You know, and they're dancing. And they're... But some of the protest theatre was about people, not about politics. And this is something I've been trying to stick to all my life. Yes, the political virus is so prominent when people are dying of it. But when it's cured, it doesn't mean a thing. But when it's about people... It means everything because it's about people's fears and about people's extraordinary embrace and their generosity of spirit. And I'm here as an extremely excited and optimistic South African. Believe me, if we can keep our young people alive, we will have the greatest democracy in the world in spite of our present government. <laughs>